In the 1990s, uh, mid 1990s, I was a senior in high school, and it was the year of the O.J. Simpson trial. But um, you know, and everybody would rush home and to hear the latest news or to see excerpts of the trial after school. And I became obsessed with these uh, church burnings that were happening in Alabama primarily, and there were hundreds of them. And Bill Clinton uh, was also trying to stop this. Uh, he was trying to pass legislation huh. about hate crimes. And so I was really obsessed with all these churches being burned. But there was no news coverage because of the O.J. Simpson trial. So okay. all my passion for you know this atrocity that was happening in Alabama was, um, it just fueled my anger and my passion for telling this story because I felt like not, not enough people knew about these churches that were burning because these churches in, this, in Alabama that were at the center of the community, you know, if a church burned, the community was displaced and it was really a tragic event that happened. So that story and those stories stood with me uh, years and years after and it, it turned into a play after about 10 years. Most of the churches burned in Alabama and Bology, um is significant because one of the gentlemen who burnt one of the churches ended up helping to rebuild the church before they caught him. Oh. And so Bology made national attention because there were three or four churches burned in this small town and this individual who was an arsonist who burned several of the churches lived in Bology. The number one thing I would say is sacred stories, so stories from the Bible, um, stories you know, from research, from news articles, gospel music, spirituals, field hollers, but uh, also the land, like images. I, I visited Bology, but also images that I found about Alabama and mm -hmm. the country and the river and the trees. All of that fueled my passion for this play, and I tried to infect the play with as many of those images as possible. All of these stories and narratives and, and uh, sacred stories find their way into the place somehow. I feel like what's beautiful about being a, living in the United States is that we're an amalgam of cultures. And so the storytelling that I try to give audiences is always a mixture, a fusion of different cultures, different belief systems, different types of music, because I really feel like that represents who we are, you know, as, as Americans in the United States. I write plays because actually uh, the real reason is I have a lot to say, but I don't. I'm shy, so I love. You know, I, I want to. I want to speak my mind, but also I. I want to be in dialogue with other people, and I think the most powerful way to do that for myself, because of my personality, is to write plays. And I love to hear audiences talk about what they've seen and how it makes them feel, even if it's uncomfortable. Um, and for me, it's political. It's a political action. Uh, writing plays and having the audiences be in dialogue with you and your work. The first production is usually a lot of changes, a lot of scene changes. What I do is, after, even after the first draft, I, I have actors read it, and I, along the process, every step of the way, I'll have actors read it. Mm -hmm. I'll do stage readings of it, I'll do workshops, because I really feel like, because theater is such a collaborative art, you mm -hmm. really need your collaborators in from the beginning, and with you every step of the way to, to create all these layers that I like to make in my work. And um, if everything goes well in the second, third production, you don't have to do as many drastic changes. I started as a poet. I was a poet for many, many years. Uh -huh. And in college, my professors said that, you know, these are not poems, these are plays. Huh. And I fought with them forever. And then they, one of them said, you know, you have stage directions. <laughs> <laughs> this is a play. And, you know, and then after that, I took a playwriting class, and ever since then, you know, I got the bug, and I haven't turned back since. In high school, I was an actor. I was in several plays, and um, the note I always got was, you drag your feet. <laughs> you drag your feet. And I, I knew there was something about theater that I liked. I knew it wasn't acting, but I loved telling stories. And so, as an actor, you got to tell a story, but it wasn't your own. But I, I recall changing some of the lines that I was supposed to say. So I'm working on three musicals. One is about the Harlem Renaissance. One is about this really interesting case about uh, the first interracial couple in the United States and their case going to the Supreme Court, Loving really? versus Virginia. That the actual their actual last name is Loving, which is very ironic. Wow. And then I'm also working on a, a musical about Muhammad Ali. Oh. You know, I love the South. Both of my parents are from the South, and uh, my whole family is from the South. And I think the, the stories that I grew up on, the food that I grew up on, the music that I grew up on, even my faith in many ways, is all drenched in Southern culture. And so the stories that I like to tell and the stories that I'm passionate about take place in the South because I think there is so much, there's a 
poetry really lives here. People speak in poetic cadence. People live and describe themselves in poetic ways. And so the height language that I used to describe or tell stories in really works for the South. I feel like that's a beautiful marriage. And um, because my history is drenched in the South, um, it's all I know, really. I mean, I am a California born and raised uh, writer, but um, I, apparently I even talk in a Southern accent. Shrimp and grits, which is my, one of my favorite meals. <laughs> and my second favorite meal is gumbo. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to have this play produced here. And I'm so excited. Please come see it.